It's a smaller patch Tuesday, thank goodness, but there's still a couple O days. Let's talk about them on the Patch Report. Hello, everyone. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our unofficial patch wrangler. It is time for the patch report for May of 2024. And we have a lot to talk about, even though there's not a whole lot of patches. So that makes it good after last month's brutally gigantic patch uh, Tuesday. Let's go ahead and start talking. And let's talk about Apple patches first, because last month, earlier this month, they patched some stuff that was being under active attack mainly the RT kit uh, and the newer stuff. They now have ported that back to the older Apple iOS. Uh, so make sure that you get that if you have an older device. And I also wanted to point out that there's an update for Safari that was reported at Pwn to Own and uh, from Manfred Paul, who is uh, just a browser genius. He hacked all four browsers at the contest, including Safari. So I think that was great. Now that's patched. Moving on to Adobe, we have uh, quite a few patches here. We've got eight different patches, but really it's only covering 37 CVEs. None are under active attack. Uh, none are higher than a priority three, which means your regular patch cadence. Obviously the most uh, interesting one is going to be Adobe Reader uh, because that's the one we use most often and we see PDFs exploited in the wild all the time. Uh, but there's several of these bugs, uh, several of these patches that are critical rated and could result in arbitrary code execution, Illustrator, FrameMaker, Dreamweaver. I also wanna point out that there's a patch for Arrow, which is a new product to me. Um, never heard of it before, had to look up what it does. And I believe it's the first Adobe patch for Arrow, which is an augmented reality authoring and publishing tool according to their website. So congrats Arrow on your first patch. Uh, moving on to the Microsoft patches, which are much more interesting. We have 59 new CVEs reported today in our standard group of components. Uh, and if you include some externally reported ones, we're up to 62 altogether, or 63 altogether, excuse me. There's four external ones, two in Chromium, two in GitHub. Uh, so only one critical, that's interesting. Uh, I also wanted to point out here that Microsoft has not addressed any Pono and related bugs yet. Waiting on you, Microsoft. Uh, as far as I know, you're the only vendor who hasn't. Sadness. But let's talk about, uh, there's two under active attack this month. And the first one I wanna talk about is this DWM core library. And the, why, the reason I wanna talk about this is because Microsoft had several people that were acknowledged as having reported it, which means different organizations are seeing it. So that what that says to me is it's not very targeted. I don't wanna say it's widespread, but it's more than just a targeted attack. Uh, so definitely take a look at that. EOP bugs like this are combined with code execution bugs, like a, say a PDF bug, where you open a PDF and get code execution. What code are you gonna execute? You're gonna execute this elevation privilege to elevate and then run code at system. So that's the sort of thing, that's how those get paired. Uh, and malware and ransomware do that all the time. I wanna talk about the SharePoint information disclosure uh, next, because it was uh, reported one by my friend and ZDI analyst, Piotr, uh, but also because it's an XXE and it's an info disclosure. And we tend to poo poo info disclosures, uh, but this one is really interesting and it could le read local files, but you could also do an SSRF with it and you could also NTM, NTLM relay with it. So it's a really interesting bug. Uh, Piotr is gonna produce a, a blog here in a little bit. It goes into detail about it, much more to come on that. Uh, next up is this Windows search service elevation of uh, privilege. And this is an interesting one too. Again, reported through the ZDI program. This is a bug we purchased uh, and reported. So this is the type of EOP that really gets exploited. Uh, and you can see I've gone in through here and, and really giving you some extra detail. You can create a pseudo sim link. An attacker can then use that to delete a file or folder as system. And we published a blog several months ago showing that how file deletes can actually be used to elevate privileges. Uh, this is a perfect example of that. And I, I think it's really cool. So definitely check that out. And finally, there is a mark of the web bypass here. Um, I, I tagged this one, this is moderate. And this is why I, I wanted to do it because we often poo poo moderates and go, oh, I don't care about that. We're not applying moderates. You really should, because we see Mark of the Web security bypasses used in the wild all the time here at the ZDI. And I'm not saying this one is in the wild, I'm saying this type of attack is used in the wild, where you zip up all of your stuff 
and you send an archive file past your network defenses or your host defenses, unzip that, and then use some sort of smart screen bypass or some protected mode bypass to install your ransomware, malware, whatever, because the mark of the web is not there. So interesting from that perspective. The other one uh, is an MSHTML. The other actively exploited bug, I should say, is an MSHTML bypass. Uh, and that's interesting as well. Just when you thought Trident was gone, just when you thought Internet Explorer couldn't hurt me anymore, Trident comes back from the grave and says, oh, yes, we can. That's right. IE is still on your systems, whether you like it or not. Uh, the publicly known one is an ASP.NET Core DOS, but there's not really any information on that, and we don't really know where it's publicly known. So there, that, that's what you have. Uh, if you could take a look at the uh, table here, lots of importance. You'll see a lot of bugs. Um, I want to kind of like talk about some of these bugs. Look at the Windows Mobile Broadband Driver. Interesting, I suppose. And we have like a bunch in uh, the remote routing and access servers, RS. These are older, uh, older uh, protocols, you know, older services that really don't get used much anymore. Cool that they're getting fixed, but not exactly the most exciting or the most terrifying bugs you see out there. And again, a couple of Chromium bugs uh, indicated there. Only one bug this month that really will need some uh, additional uh, care and love beyond just the applying a patch. And uh, that is, let me scroll back up here and see it where I left it. Oh, right here. The Azure Migrate spoofing vulnerability because Azure Migrate, you have to migrate. So there is an article I linked to on, on how to do that if, if you're not aware. Uh, the, the one critical rated bug this month, SharePoint RCE, you do have to be authenticated. However, any SharePoint user has the permissions needed to actually exploit this bug. Uh, we've blogged about this a lot in the past. Um, there's moving on to some other bugs. There's an RCE and Hyper-V, which is a guest to host escape. The only thing I want to caveat here is Microsoft doesn't detail if you're executing code on the host at medium integrity, at high integrity, at low integrity. They just say you can go from a guest to a host. So that's interesting. Um, SQL, hey, SQL, not a big deal this month. Last couple months, we saw mountains of SQL bugs getting fixed. Just the one this month. And like the previous months, uh, you would need to uh, attach yourself to a malicious SQL database. Probably not realistic. Uh, you're probably not going to be just connecting and querying random databases out there. A lot of, uh, a lot of social engineering would be involved in that. Uh, and there is a interesting cryptographic services bug, but it does require a machine in the middle. So that lessens it there. But if you could exploit it, you could actually uh, import uh, a malicious certificates onto your system. Cool. Uh, again, gonna be hard to pull off, exploit kind of unlikely, but cool nonetheless. Uh, and then some open and own in like Excel, .NET and Visual Studio. Lots of EOPs, but uh, they're almost all like I said, that where you just elevate the system. I think the only one is a brokering file system component. That's different uh, because you can gain uh, your current user's credential. So that's interesting. Uh, the attack could be launched from a low privilege app container, which is why it gets a little bit different. Other than that, you're just elevating to system. These bugs are interesting from an attacker perspective, but not interesting from a defender perspective because they're just kind of boring to talk about. I mean, until you really break it down with technical detail that we don't have, it's just another EOP. Um, yeah, and here is where I detail the MSHTML bypass. Uh, and again, uh, sorry. We have a few info disclosure bugs. And again, most of them, thankfully, are just dumping random bits of memory. Um, there is a couple of one that this frustrates me so much. The Microsoft write-up, the, the bug in Power BI could disclose sensitive information. Okay. Can you narrow that down at all? I don't I don't know what that means. Uh, and the deployment services could leak file contents. Specific file comment contents. Can I specify the file? Is it random files? Is it only specific? But just give me some info. It's not that hard. Uh, we've got some spoofing bugs, but these are really reading more like cross-site scripting bugs, which can be the type of spoofing because you're executing, you know, cross-site scripting. I don't need you to explain it to you again. Um, but yeah, the final spoofing bug is actually in Bing search engine. 
where it's going to spoof a result when you click on a link. That to me is more of a spoofing bug than just cross-site scripting. The other ones are, are cross-site scripting. There is a tampering bug um, in Intune mobile application management. Uh, however, I do want to note that to be affected, you have to have a rooted device and have other components disabled. So yeah, I don't, I don't think that one's that big a deal either. And then some DOS bugs with no additional information. So there you have it. Uh, that is the month of May all wrapped up. Not a huge month, but still some significant bugs. And uh, definitely watch out for those under active attack and make sure you roll those out quickly. Hey, our next patch Tuesday is going to be June 11th, and I will be back with all of the latest in updates and security patches and all those fixes. And until then, please stay safe, have some fun, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.